In this lesson, you're gonna learn how to use Socket.io to transfer data between the server and the client in real time. Now together in this lesson, we're gonna work on a little side project. So we're not actually gonna set up what's necessary for the chat app. Instead, we'll be creating a little counter application, which we'll talk about in a couple of moments. Once we know how to use Socket.io, in the next lesson, it'll be your challenge to start creating the code necessary for the chat app. So let's go ahead and get started in this lesson by creating our little counter application. Now the count app will be a very simple application allowing us to illustrate how we can use socket.io for real-time apps. The server is going to store a single number called the count and it will share that count with all connected clients. The client will render that count in the browser and it will also show the user a button that they can click to increment the count. Once the server has the incremented count, it'll share the new count with all connected clients and they'll all have their data updated. So let's go ahead and get started by figuring out how to transfer data from server to client because what we're going to do initially is share the current count with every connected client. So right here, once a new connection comes in, we wanna send them the current count. Now we don't have a count, so let's go ahead and create one, let count equal zero. And down below, the goal is to send that count back to the client that just opened the connection. To get started, we have to change the parameters that this function accepts. Right now, it's not accepting any, though it does get called with an argument right here. We're going to call that socket. Socket is an object and it contains information about that new connection. So right here, we can use methods on socket to communicate with that specific client. Remember, if I have five clients connecting to the server, this function is going to run five different times, one time for each new connection. So all we're gonna do is add a single line of code right here that sends some data back to that newly connected client. And to do that, we use a method on socket, which is socket.emit. So when we're working with socket.io and we're transferring data, we are sending and receiving what are called events. So right now, what I wanna do is send an event from the server and I want to receive that event on the client. So right here, to send an event, we use socket.emit on the server, and an event is made up of at least one thing, the name of the event. So in this case, there is a built-in one called connection. We're gonna go ahead and set up a custom one. Almost all of your events are gonna be custom, fitting the needs of your application. Right here, what we're gonna do is create a count updated event. This will be used to send the initial count to the client, and it will also be used later on to send any changes to the count. Right here, we could just have this in place that would be enough. We could also send some data, which we'll talk about in just a moment. So right now we are emitting the event from the server to the client. The problem is that the client is not doing anything to accept it. So let's make some changes in chat.js. First up, the return value from the IO function, that needs to be stored in a variable because we're gonna wanna access it in this file. A new constant for that, we'll call the constant socket and we'll set it equal to the function's return value. So we already had socket on the server, that's available right here, when the new connection comes in. On the client, when we initialize the connection, we now also get access to socket and this is going to allow us to send events and receive events from both the server and the client. Now down below, we don't wanna send an event just yet, we want to receive the event that the server is sending to us. And to do that, we use a different method available on socket, which is socket.on. On, like we've seen on the server, accepts two arguments, the name of the event, we called this count updated and a function to run when that event occurs. Now it's important that the name right here matches up exactly with the name you picked over here. Inside of that function in chat.js, we can go ahead and do something like render a little message, the count, 
has been updated perfect. Now that we have this in place, let's make sure this message at least shows up. I would expect it to show up a single time when I first connect. What I'm going to do is make sure all of my files are saved. From the browser, I'm going to crack open the console. You can use the keyboard shortcut if you know it. Otherwise, more tools, developer tools. Right here, we have the console tab, which is great. I'm going to refresh the page to make sure I initialize that connection once again. And what do I get? The count has been updated is printing. So this is fantastic. It is our server sending some information to the client. Now, currently, it's not sending any data. Just the event is occurring and the client knows that. We could also transfer data such as the value for count. To do that, we just provide it as a, another argument. So right here, count. Now, anything we provide on emit past that first argument, which is the event name, is going to be available from the callback function on the client. So right here, we're providing a single thing for that callback function count. And over in the client, we can access that right here by providing a name. Now, I could call it count since that makes sense, but in reality, I could call it whatever I wanted to. This name can be completely unique. It is the order that matters. So right here, the second argument is the first argument for the callback function. I'm going to go ahead and save the server file. And over in chat.js, we're going to make sure that we print this count as well. What I'm going to do is just add a second argument onto console.log to dump that count to the terminal. And then we're going to save all of our files and refresh the browser another time. Right here, I give it a refresh. And what do I see? I see my message with the number zero right on the end. So at this point, we are sending data from server to client. And that is a great start. What we want to do now, though, is allow the client to send some data to the server. What we're going to do is allow the client to click a button to increment that count. Let's go ahead and figure out how we're going to get this done. First up, let's go ahead and create a button in index.html. So inside of the body, I'm going to add the button just below my chat app text right here. We'll create that new button and we'll provide the text plus one. And we're also going to set up an ID for this button so we can easily target it from JavaScript. I'll go ahead and set the ID equal to something like increment. Perfect. Now that we have the button in place, let's go ahead and add an event listener in chat.js. We want to do something every single time that button is clicked. Right here, what we're going to do is first select it. So like we've done a few sections ago, We'll be using document.querySelector to grab just a single element by its ID. So right here inside of quotes, we start with the hash sign, then the ID value, which we called increment. And from there, we can store this on a variable and access it later. Or we could simply chain another method call to add event listener, which is exactly what I'm going to do. Now, the event we're trying to listen for is called click, and then we'll set up the function to run whenever that button is clicked. Right here, console.log printing clicked to the terminal. Now, let's go ahead and make sure we're at least seeing that show up, and if we are, that is a great start. Over here, I can see we have a whole bunch of errors. This is perfectly normal since Nodemon shut down the server and restarted it. So we temporarily lost connection, but the client did indeed auto reconnect. If I go ahead and refresh things, I can see my plus one button. And if I click it, I can see my clicked message showing up one time for each time it's clicked. Now, what I want to do is emit an event from the client and have that event listened for on the server. So essentially the opposite of what we just did, where we emitted from the server and listened on the client. So right here, when someone clicks that button, what am I going to do? I'm going to use socket.emit, this time though from the client. Right here, what I'm going to do is provide a name for this event. I'll call it something like increment. And in this case, I don't need to send any data across since the server knows the current count and it's just going to add one to it. 
So right here, from the client, this is enough. Next up, we have to make sure we're listening for this event on the server and responding accordingly. So over inside of index.js, if we want to listen for an event, what we do is we add something else inside of this function right here. So down below, we have to use socket.on, this time using socket.on from the server. Now, what are we listening for? I am listening for an event called increment. And when I get increment, I will provide the function to run. Now, the question is, what do I want to do? Well, in this case, what I want to do is one, increment the count. So let's start there. That is count plus plus. Next up, I want to make sure that the client gets the updated count. So right here, that'll be socket.emit. I am going to emit count updated exactly like I did above and I will provide the count as the data that I'm sending. Now, we should be able to see that count actually change. Make sure to save all of the files on both the server and the client. From the browser, I'm gonna give things a quick refresh. Right here, what I'm gonna do is click that button, and what do I see down below? I can see that my count is indeed updating in real time, which is a fantastic step in the right direction. Now, what I want to take a moment to do is open up another client as well. So right here, what I'm going to do is take localhost 3000 and copy it to the clipboard. I'm then going to open up another browser. I'm going to put this over on the right-hand side so I can see both at the exact same time. And once I have both browser windows open, I'll make sure both are navigated to localhost 3000 and I'll crack open the dev tools for this second one. Now, what I should see is a message saying that the count has been updated to four, and that's true. By the time that this particular client connects, the count is indeed four. Now, the problem is that if this client changes the count, only this client gets notified about the change. And to prove that, all we have to do is click the button. I'm seeing the message, the count has been updated over here, but I'm not seeing it over here, and that's a problem. So to fix that, all we need to do is make a small change to how we're emitting the event on the server. When we use socket.emit, we are emitting the event to a particular connection. In this case, we don't want to emit it to just a single connection. I want to emit it to every connection available, so we're going to comment out that line, which is not working for us, and we're going to replace it with a similar, though slightly different one. Instead of calling socket.emit, we'll be calling io.emit. This is going to emit the event to every single connection that's currently available, and we are going to emit the exact same event that is count updated with the exact same data. So right here as the second argument, I'll provide the count. So these two lines are very similar. This one emits an event to that specific connection. This one emits the event to every single connection. And in this case, that is exactly what we want. So what we're going to do is make sure that we save the server file. I'm going to go over to Chrome and I'm going to refresh those browser windows. Right here I have the first one and in the background I have the second one. Now, when I refresh them, both of them start off at zero, and that's correct. The server has restarted, so the count has been reset. Over here, what I'm going to do is click plus one, and now both, in real time, have that data available. Even though this client wasn't the one that changed the count, it did get notified about that change, and the same would be true if I clicked plus one over here. Both of the clients are indeed getting that data updated in real time. As soon as the button is clicked, we can see the data changing. So at this point, we now know how to use socket.io to send data back and forth between the server and the client. If we wanted to, we could always go ahead and take this count and actually render it to the user interface. But in this case, this little count example is just being used to illustrate some of the basic principles of socket.io. So for now, that's where we're gonna leave the user interface. Though don't worry, when we create the chat app, we will be building out a complete UI. 
Now with this in place, let's take a quick moment to recap what we just covered so we can make sure we actually understand what's going on, as in the next lesson, it's going to be up to you to emit and listen to custom events to create some functionality for that chat app. Right here, what we really have is a socket.io server that does two things. Right here, we have those two things. The server emits an event that the client receives. This is called count updated. And the client emits an event that the server receives. And this is called increment. That's all we're doing. So when a new connection comes in, the first thing the server does is it sends the current count to that specific connection. Notice I'm using socket.emit here and not io.emit. If I used io.emit here, every time a new client joined, all clients would get the count data, and that's a waste because the count hasn't changed, so there's no need to send it to everyone. Now, the client receives this event over here, and when it gets it, it logs the data out to the terminal. Now, that is the first event right here where the server emits and the client receives. The second one is when the client emits and the server receives. In this case, the client emits the increment event when the button is clicked. Now, it doesn't provide any data, but none is necessary. It's simply enough for the server to run the function when that event occurs. The function, it changes the count, incrementing it by one, and then it goes ahead and uses io.emit to send that data to every single connected client. Because the count has changed, all of them should get notified. Now, we can go ahead and remove this line right here as it's commented out and not doing anything, and I'll also remove those comments that I just pasted in. In the next lesson, it'll be up to you to do something similar, though with functionality related to the chat app. I'm really excited to get to that, so stay tuned and I'll see you then.